Greetings to you in the beloved name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Today we are continuing our My Heart Christ Home Seminar. We will be discussing the sixth room, the fifth room in the house, which is the rumpus room or you can call it the playroom. Now this room represents our associations and our activities. So we're going to go ahead and start with reading the story about the man who invited Jesus to come into his house. We've already talked about the study, which represents the mind, um, the dining room, which represents the appetites and desires, um, the quiet room, which represents our time with Jesus, and then we talked about the workshop last, which represents our uh, what we're doing for the kingdom of God. And so now we're talking about the playroom, which talks about the activities that we do and the associations that we're affiliated with as a Christian. So let's see what happened when Jesus came into this room with this man in his heart. He asked me if I had a playroom. I was hoping he would not ask about this. There were certain associations and friendships, activities and amusements that I wanted to keep for myself. One evening when I was leaving to join some college companions, he stopped me with a glance and asked, are you going out this evening? I replied, yes, rather awkwardly. I don't think, Lord Jesus, that you would really want to go with me. Let us go out tomorrow night. Tomorrow night, we will go to prayer meeting. But tonight, I have another appointment. I'm sorry. He said, I thought that when I came into your house or home, we were going to do everything together to be partners. I want you to know that I am willing to go with you. Well, I mumbled, slipping out the door. We will go someplace tomorrow night. That evening, I spent some miserable hours. I felt wretched. What kind of friend was I to Jesus when I was deliberately leaving him out of my associations, doing things and going places that I know very well he would not enjoy? When I returned that evening, there was a light in his room. And I went up to talk it over with him. I said, Lord, I have learned my lesson. I cannot have a good time without you. We would do everything together. Then we went down to the rumpus room of the house and he transformed it. He brought new friends into my life, new satisfactions, and new and lasting joys. Laughter and music have been ringing through the house ever since. This is the most difficult area in our Christian walk um, to get under control as Christians. Because just like this man, many of us, when we first come to Christ, we do have uh, relationships, activities, associations that we're used to that do not line up with God, that do not please God. And so we have to make some changes. We have to... Um, Make change because if we don't, just like this man, he went ahead on and went and did what he wanted to do and didn't allow the Lord to be a part of it. But what happened? His spirit was grieved. See, your spirit is grieved and you, you can't, when, when, this lets you know that you really are a child of God. When you try to go and do things that you did when you were lost and then you don't have the fun that you had when you were lost, but you're grieved. And then that's what's going to let you know that I've been changed. There's something different about me. I can't enjoy um, being in this atmosphere anymore. I can't enjoy going out to the club and partying. You know, I can't enjoy sitting up getting high with people, even if I'm not getting high. I can't enjoy that anymore because I'm a new creature in Christ Jesus. And Jesus now lives in me. Praise God. So just like this man, we must repent. Repent means that you must change your mind about this. You must change your direction and say, okay, I got to make some changes. I remember when I gave my life to Christ, there were changes there were, that I had to make. And it wasn't easy, you know, and, and I felt like, well, oh, I'm not going to be happy. You know, that's the devil lying to you, making you feel that way. But once you just lay it all on the altar and trust God, he will bring new people into your life. He will bring people into your life that will be an encourager to you and that will be an inspiration to you. You're not someone that's in your life that's going to cause you to backslide and go back to your old way. So this man realized that he had made a mistake. He repented and then the Lord was able to transform that part of his heart. Now, whatever we do in 1 Corinthians 10, 13, it says, whatever you do in word or in deed, 
do all for the glory of God. So this is a way to allow ourselves to know if what we're doing is pleasing unto God. We can ask ourselves that question. If I go and I spend time with, with this group of people and do the things that they're going to do, is that going to glorify God? Okay, or um, if you feel like uh, there's a certain place that you used to go to and you want to know if it's okay to still go there, you can ask yourself, would Jesus want to go there? Would he be comfortable there? Okay, and we need to not say that, well, I'm going there so that I can let my light shine. I'm going to go to the club because I'm now Christian, so I'm going there to win souls. Knowing good and well, when we get in there, we're not going to be trying to win no souls. You're going to be socializing with those people, dancing with those people, and you're going to be in, in a fluence of, of, of darkness. And the Bible says that light and darkness, it cannot dwell together. We are children of the light as Christians. Praise God. In Luke 11, 33 through 36, Jesus said, No man, when he have lighted a candle, put it in a secret place. So when you come to Christ, you have now the light of Christ in you. You can't put that in a secret place. You can't say, okay, well, I go out to the club tonight. Or I go and I hang out with this group of people who are getting high that um, I'm going to hide my light. You're going to forget that you got a light. You know you got a light, but you're going to hide the light so you can participate in the works of darkness. So it says, neither under a bushel but on a candlestick that they which come in may see the light. So that means because we are the children of light that wherever you go and whoever comes around you, they should see your light shining. What does it mean to let your light shine? It means to lift up the name of Jesus. It means to walk in a way that's pleasing unto God in a way that glorifies God. That is our call as Christians to let those who are still in darkness, I don't care if it's your, your parents, if it's your sister and brother, if it's your friends, when they see you and they come in your company, then we are to let our light shine. We are to let them see the God in us. Praise God. So it says here, Jesus says, the light of the body is the eye. Therefore, when the eye is single, the whole body also is full of light. In other words, when you are singled out, focused on letting your light shine, then your whole body is light because you, in your mind you're saying, I'm going to walk in the light. I'm going to walk in the ways of the Lord. Then Jesus says, uh, but when thine eye is evil, the body also is full of darkness. So see, you can have light in you, but you can let darkness come in and take over because the Bible says that light and darkness, they cannot dwell together. It's either going to be light in the room or it's going to be dark in the room. So if you are the light of Christ is in you, when you walk into a dark place, the light should go on and hide that darkness. But what we're doing, we have the light in us and we go into a dark place and our, lit, our lights are put out. It's like somebody just took the, took, took the candle and just took it and blew your light out. Ain't that song that we sing or used to sing in church, uh, don't, let, um, don't let the devil blow my light out. This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. But then there's a part where it says, not going to let the devil blow it out. We can't let him blow our light out because remember, Jesus gave us that light and we're supposed to let it shine. So it goes on to say, Jesus says, If thy whole body therefore be full of light, having no part dark, the whole shall be full of light, as when the bright shining of a candle doeth give thee light. So we see here that this is letting us know that we must separate ourselves from darkness so our lights won't be put out. Now, the man wanted to hold on to old relationships and activities. As a new Christian, we are commanded to separate ourselves from unbelievers. And this is referenced in 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 14 through 18. It says, Be ye not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. Now, a lot of times when we hear that scripture, we think it's talking about getting married. But it's not just talking about getting married. It means yoked up. You could be yoked up with someone as your friend, as your associations. Just, you know, yoked up is like this. You don't want to be, you know, like they used to say in my time, ace, boom, coon, y'all real tight. You ain't going to be real tight with somebody that's not, that doesn't have, doesn't have the same um, goals in life as you do. You are now a Christian, so you know that you have a God to glorify, but you know your friend or your old companion or old association, maybe that old girlfriend or that old boyfriend, they don't want Jesus. They don't want to serve the Lord. So there must be a separation. And so when we first come to Christ, that is one of the first things we must realize is that there's going to have to be a separation because if you're going to continue to be with the people who are not seeking to serve the Lord, 
Are you not going to serve the Lord? You go. You, this is the reason why many Christians are straddling the fence. Jesus said, "I'd rather that you be either hot or cold, but because you are lukewarm, I'm going to spew you out of my mouth." We need to be on fire for God and not for Him at all. Praise God. So it goes on to say, "For what fellowship have righteousness with unrighteousness? The two can't go together. And what communion have light with darkness?" And what concord have Christ with Belial, which is a, a, a false god? Or what part have he that believeth with the infidel? And what agreement have the temple of God with idols? You ain't going to take idols into the house, the house of God. Praise God. It says, for ye are the temple of the living God, as God have said. I will dwell in them and walk in them. And I will be their God, and they shall be my people. So we are the temple of God. Our bodies are the temple where the Holy Spirit dwells in us. And God is our God. He walks in us. He talks in us. So what does he say? He says here, Wherefore, because I've said all that to you, now what you're going to do and what I'm telling you to do as a child of God, come out from among them, he says, and be separate, said the Lord. And touch not the unclean thing. Touch not that alcohol. Touch not that joint. Touch not fornication. Touch not adultery. Don't touch the unclean. Touch not the crack. Touch not the pornography. Turn all that stuff off. Separate yourself from it. If we separate ourselves from it, God will empower us. And he will uh, give us the strength to continue down that path of light, not darkness. And he will bring new things into your life that will give you joy. New activities to do. New associations. New people to surround yourself by. Now, I don't mean that you should not have anything to say to people because that's our job but when you talk to people who are lost no matter whom it might be in your mind you need to re remember I'm a child of God the light is in me how can I help this person see Christ what can I say Lord give me an opportunity but you don't want to do that while you're partying with them maybe on your job you know you may go to lunch with somebody but when you go to lunch with them in your heart you should be saying Lord use me this person need to know you. Use me. Let my light shine so I can help them to come out of darkness and come into the marvelous light of Jesus Christ. Praise God. Now, it says here in the scriptures that I'm reading here, it says, So come out, touch not the unclean thing, and this, what, this is what will happen. He said, And I will receive you. God said, I will receive you. And I will be a father unto you. And you shall be my sons and my daughters. And, and he said, the Lord Almighty. So God is letting us know it's not good enough just to say, I believe Jesus died for my sins. I'm a Christian. But you got to come out from those old companions and those old associations and those old activities that you would not want Jesus to be a part of. Because actually, Jesus is everywhere you go because he's in us. So he sees when you, when you commit fornication. He sees when you commit adultery. He sees when you get drunk. He sees when you get high. He sees everything that we do. He's there. So instead of us trying to please man, we ought to be trying to please God because he's there and he's judging everything that we do. Praise God. Now, to be a friend with the world is to be an enemy against God. It tells us that in James 4.4. 4. It says, Ye adulterers and adulter adulteress, know ye not that the friendship of the world is enmity with God. Whoso therefore be a friend of the world is the enemy of God. So that means that if you are a friend with the people of the world that do not believe in Jesus, who are not walking with the Lord, do not believe in letting their light shine, living this new life, in walking in the kingdom of God, and, and, and they want to do the works of darkness and evil, then you become an enemy of God. So how can we be an enemy of God and be a Christian at the same time? It doesn't make sense. So we must separate ourselves from darkness, and when we do, we will be sanctified. Now, to be sanctified means to be set apart. It means to be set apart from the norm, set apart for God's purpose, for God's glory, for God's honor. And, you know, and this may sound hard to anyone who just gave their life to Christ or someone who has never really uh, changed their association, their activities. But I'm a living witness to tell you, I've been saved 29 years. And I can tell you, God did a quick work in my life when I had to first have a made up mind. Once you make up your mind and surrender all to the Lord and trust him and say, Lord, my life is in your hands. I will do what you say do. He will come in and he will empower you. And everything you let go of 
of it. Every relationship that you get out of it, it may be painful to get out of it, but the Lord will come in and give you joy, come in and give you peace, and He will fulfill every void in your life. But if you don't trust Him enough to let it go, you can't receive what He has for you. If you your hands are, are closed with the sins that you have always walked in in your hands, and you refuse to open up your hands, God can't put nothing else in there. So we got to let go that we might receive the things that God would have for us to have in our lives as Christians. Praise God. Now in Genesis 1 and 4, God said, God saw that the light, it says, and God saw the light when he created light and darkness and that it was good. And you know what he did? He divided the light from darkness. There must be a division from the light versus darkness in our lives. Ephesians 5 and 8 says, we were sometime in darkness, but now are we in the light. So walk as children of the light. And Ephesians 5 and 11 says, And have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness. To do the things that we used to do don't have any kind of good fruit. They, it doesn't glorify God. Nothing good comes out of it. As a matter of fact, only trouble comes out of it. And I'm going to tell you, when you give your life to Christ and you try to go out there and do the things you used to do, the devil is waiting on you. And it's going to be hard for you because he's going to attack you. See, he wasn't attacking when we were lost because he already had us. But now that we're calling ourselves Christians and trying to serve God and walk right, you go dabbling in sin and the Bible the Bible says that a backslider's ways are hard. It'll be harder for you to come back to Christ than it was when you first came to Christ. So we don't want to have no dealings with the works of darkness as Christians. That's why we got to be prayerful. That's why we got to have that quiet time with Jesus every day praying and saying, Lord, give me strength. Give me strength to walk upright. Give me strength to do the things that's pleasing unto you. And he will. Because he says, ask and you shall receive. Now, I want to warn you. Beware of wolves in sheep clothing. The devil knows what you want. He knows what you like. You may say, okay, I'm a Christian now, so I'm looking for a man that has this, this, and this good Christian qualities. Well, the devil will send people your way. To, he says, that the, the Bible tells us that uh, um, the devil is able to make himself appear like an angel of light. He, he knows what you want. So someone may come say, oh yeah, I'll go to church with you, you know, um, yeah, we could do this. But if they change on you, you need to cut them loose. If they start wanting you to commit a fornication with them, you need to know this is not the man, this is not the woman for me because I know this is against God. You can witness to them and let them know what God requires of us that we're supposed to be married before we, get, before we have sex. If they don't like that and they want to leave, then that's fine. This is a way you can wean off. You can, you can um, like Jesus said, he said, when he comes, he said, let the wheat and tares tear together. And when he comes, he'll do the separating. Well, just speak the word of God, and then the word is going to divide. Either you're going to run that person from the Lord or from you, or you're going to draw that person to God. So whomever you are associated with, let your light shine. And if they don't want to walk in the light, then you know that's your sign. They're not for you. Jesus said in uh, Matthew 7, 16, you know them by their fruit. See, we all have fruit that we bear. If the tree is, is bearing uh, good fruit, then it's good. If it's bearing bad fruit, then it's bad. So if they're bearing bad fruit, that's your warning. You need to leave them alone. So in our relationships, I like to say, don't give place to the devil. In your relationships, even as Christians, sometimes you both of you can be a Christian. And, and, but don't give place to the devil. Don't be in places alone by yourself at night and you are single. Because you know, the Bible says you can't put fire in your bosom and not be burned. Can you take a paper towel and twist it? and light it, and then just uh, take your shirt and dump it down in your shirt, and you not be burnt? Well, that's saying the same thing happens if you got a boyfriend or girlfriend and y'all alone at night. It could be in the day, but you're just alone in a home, a place where it's a bed, a couch, whatever, and you you know you're feeling hot in your flesh, you're going to give in. But see, you, so don't even give place. Jesus said, watch and pray always that you don't enter into temptation because he knows how hard it is for us to endure temptation. That's why he says that we should watch and pray and that we don't enter in. So this man, he uh, wanted to hold on to those old association and friendships, but as he did with all the other rooms, he went ahead on and yielded to the Lord. And when he yielded, the Lord transformed that part of his heart. He said, music has been in the house uh, sounding ever since. God will bring some joy into your life. The reason why a lot of us don't have joy is because we're not walking the right. So I pray that you've been encouraged today to know that you have to make some changes in your life in order to really love the Lord with all your heart, mind, and soul means that you got to let go of everything that displeases Him and do those things that glorify Him. So we're going to pray God's strength today for His children. 
Father God, we come before your holy presence, looking unto you, the author and the finisher of our faith. We thank you, Father God, for your divine word, Lord God, for where your word is, it brings light. We thank you, Father God, that you have called us with an everlasting love. We thank you, Father God, that you have called us out of darkness into your marvelous light. We thank you, Father God, that you are here to deliver us from everything that holds us in darkness. So we come right now. I pray for everyone under the sound of my voice that may be struggling with associations and activities in their lives that are displeasing to you and feel like they just can't get out of it. Lord God, I pray for your anointing to overshadow them right now, that they will have that faith and believe that they can do all things through Christ who gives them to strength, the strength, and that they will repent right now and that they will cry out to you and ask you, Lord God, for deliverance and ask you, Lord God, for a changed mind. Ask you right now, Lord God, for a changed heart and that they will walk with you, Lord, in the light. I know that you are able, Lord, to cause their lives to be transformed when they just yield, when they repent, when they lay everything on the altar of sacrifice. I know, Lord God, that you are faithful and you are loving God. You say, my commandments are not grievous. Praise God. Hallelujah. Lord God, but once we yield to you, we will experience peace and joy that we never had before. And not only that, Lord God, but you will bless us and anoint us with a light that shines so bright that those who are in darkness will find a way out. And that's our call that we let our light shine. So we thank you for this divine message today about this man who allowed Jesus to transform this part of his heart. Transform our hearts today, Lord, that our activities and associations may be centered around you and whatever we do in word or deed that it will be done for the glory of God in Jesus name we pray amen praise God I'm really excited today that we are almost finished with this seminar we have one more room and that is the hall closet and the hall closet are where we keep those hidden sins so join me for the next session on the hall closet and remember pray and do not let the enemy deceive you but understand and remember that God has commanded you just like me, to let go of those old associations and those old activities that do not glorify Him. Have a blessed day today.